statement of the last man and the last woman. I truly believe that satya or truth is the basis for justice and is most fundamental and is the core to the human existence. And a seeker of truth can have karuna and only karuna or compassion as his or her tool for this struggle. Hence, ahimsa, non-violence would be his or her only weapon and satyagraha, the movement through which we put forth this struggle. He or she would use satyagraha for the upliftment of the last woman, last girl, last man, which would be of course called Antyodhya as Ruchira rightly pointed out. And I believe that until we realize Antyodhya, that is the upliftment of the last man, woman and child, Sarvodaya, that is justice and upliftment of all, is not possible. I have come here to know, after knowing that Apne Aap truly believes in Ahimsa and put in their own words, resisting violence to the self and to the other. And in Antyodaya, that is upliftment of the last and most marginalized woman. Now there is a great need to separate trafficking from so-called sex work. We condemn human trafficking in all of its forms, including sexual exploitation, and demand that it should be criminalized as a matter of international law. Research across the world has shown that not all women pushed into this exploitation are trafficked. Many enter this due to compulsion. Some people say that many enter this by choice. I want to correct and say they don't enter this by choice, but they actually enter this because of lack of choice of dignified source of earning livelihood. In certain parts of India, in the name of tradition, in the name of cultural practice, women of certain communities are forced into this. I come from Mansour, Madhya Pradesh. I represented that in the last parliament in, uh, in the People's House. And I have personally witnessed that women of the most marginalized groups, called as the Bajra community, are forced into this. Their work is criminalized, morally they are ostracized, and are deprived of any sort of social and legal security. They face, their children face, discrimination, violence, and abuse. I have had personal experience of witnessing discrimination against these women. Some of them strive continuously to get themselves out of this trap and earn living in a dignified manner. But they are rejected, abused, and all the doors and windows are shut for them. And they are not able to get out of this. I would like to share here my anguish on this type of an exploitation. We in India are still, Amar ji is not here, but are still not free from the bondage of feudal and patriarchal mindset. Tribal women in Bijapur, Chhattisgarh get molested, gang raped, are paraded naked by the armed forces. Kind of force used to send a message that if you dare to challenge the establishment, your woman folk would get this. A judge in a lower court simply comments that how can a tribal woman be ever molested or assaulted, as if to say that a tribal woman has no dignity, that she is actually supposed to be available. There are instances when if a girl gets molested in the night, we come across statements saying that the girl should not be going out in the night that she was inviting trouble for herself. Why was she dressed in such and such way? Why didn't she call the rapist bhaiya, brother? And that would have sort of helped soften the rapist towards her. This is the environment we are living in. Recently, I met a group of students from Haryana Central University. They were enacting a play written by Mahashweta Devi, none other than Mahashweta Devi on Draupadi. The play which was, which is set in the background of exploitation of a tribal woman by the armed forces. And the students, believe me or not, faced sedition charges. And then I don't want to 
going to 